What is up, homie? I'm super sorry I forgot to record an intro, but you're really gonna enjoy this vlog. Really productive day, got a leg session in, really good training session at the pitch. Let's go get it. say make sure you get a dynamic warm-up in before any session here we just did a kneeling seat to a squat to open up the groin we then moved on to an extended adductor stretch so the first one the foot is completely down the second one the heel is down and the toes are up to stretch a different part of your groin then moved into some movement skills to get the body warm, really get myself activated neurally in the brain. This is very, very good to improve your speed and improve your rate of force development into the ground. Then I just moved on to a right legged pillar skip, same exact thing, just using the right knee to drive up. And as you see here, I don't have much space, but as I always say, you have to make the most of what you have. The usual room that I do my stuff in was taken due to yoga, so I came in here and did what I could. Did a sideways pillar skip and then moved into a straight legged skip, which is very, very good for the hamstrings. I did about two to three sets of all of these movements. Then I moved into an explosive step up as you see here, just plowing into the step. And then with that other knee, I'm coming up. As always, coordinating the arms with the legs. So you're just trying to be springy and elastic with these forward bounds, landing on the ball of your foot, not letting your heel touch. Then I went into some drop jumps. These are some very, very advanced plyometrics, and I do not recommend doing them unless you're pretty experienced with plyometrics. First start with your landing, then you can move on to the jumps. Then I went into some trap bar deadlifts, trap bar deadlift jumps. As you saw there, I started out with a heavier weight and I didn't feel like I was being explosive enough, so I simply moved down weight. When training and working on power, the emphasis is to move with speed. Then I got into a high pin explosive squat so as you see here, the pins are just set up. I'm not going down too far. I'm just working on the explosivity of the concentric phase, the way up, trying to really work on that explosive starting speed and starting power. As you see, I paired that up with some band assisted jumps. So just hook a resistance band to a pull up bar, and then you're just trying to jump absolutely as high as you can and you're resetting after each landing because I just want you to focus on one jump at a time. Then the last thing of the day is just an ISO hack squat. So that's how you set it up if you don't have a hack squat machine and you're just holding in this position, trying to be as explosive as possible, obviously while staying in one position. And this is what breaking the fast is looking like, a little bit of a protein oatmeal. Let's go. Look from right shoulder. Five. That's it. Four. Two. Five. Seven. Eight. Four. Seven. Five. Yes. Five. Four. Two. Good. 
Two. Okay. Make it good. So I'm sorry for the clickbaity title, but this is honestly how FC Barcelona players must train. As I spoke today with my guy Avner, if you make the training very hard, the game is going to be easier. I'm sure you've heard that quote. I know I butchered it a little bit, but as you see here, I'm checking on two iPads. You'll see in a clip in about a couple seconds, I show you how Busquets looks in front of him and then looks behind him. And when he sees both angles, when he sees both positions where his teammates are, he can make his decision much easier. So if you train as hard as you play or harder, the game will be much easier. So as I said, look at both clips. There's one look to see where his teammate is. There's the second look to see what's behind him. He immediately turns into space, plays that ball right away into his teammates and they're through the lines. Four, four. Okay, look for four, yes, that's it. Yeah. Pop four again. 
Four again, that's it, good catch. Eight. 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 Go to eight. That's it. Five. Five. Yes. Good, Eric. Alla. Two. Run here, never hurt no man's. Never hurt no man's. We're going four twos, baby. Tell him to subscribe to the vlog. Subby, tell him to sub. Sub. Tell him to sub. Very, very simple. Some chicken, some rice, veg. A bit of Gary V.
All right, homies, thank you so much for watching the video so far. Thank you to those who asked questions in the last YouTube video on the continuous Q&A. In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question from Gish Koi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, my guy. If you happen to start training with a team, but you really don't like your teammates, or you just don't really connect in the friendliest of ways with them, can that overall affect how you play? And if so, how? Very good question. And the simple answer is yes. If you don't connect well with your teammates, it can definitely affect how you play. First of all, football is a team sport. It's not a one-on-one -on -one individual sport like UFC, tennis, or golf. So yes, in a way you have to rely on your teammates. And what I've found, and what I've found in a lot of my friends who I talk to, when you're friendly with your teammates and you become friends with your teammates, you play better because you feel much more comfortable on the field. And like I said, football is a team sport. So no matter what position you're playing, whether you're playing as a center defensive midfielder, whether you're playing as a winger, whether you're playing as a forward, your teammates are gonna influence your play. So for example, if you're playing as a forward and you make contact it runs in behind and you're not the most friendly and you're not the most intertwined and connected with your teammates they may not slip you that ball through and that's just the truth of the matter they may not play you the ball when you're in good positions and as a forward as a striker you need that ball in good positions when you get the ball in good positions you can do your thing and you can score and the way that you get better as a footballer the way that you get up the ranks as a footballer is as a forward you have to score goals so if you're not connected well with your teammates and you're kind of a standout over here then it may definitely affect you on the pitch. So that's the first part of the answer for the first part of the question. The second part is how do you connect better with your teammates? So the first thing is don't try too hard. Don't be that try hard guy or that try hard girl who cracks jokes that when it's not needed, just vibe, just vibe. Introduce yourself, act with confidence, work hard during the training, crack jokes when it's needed to be cracked, and just have fun. When you put the energy into connecting with people, they're gonna feel it. So when you put out positive energy, when you put out good energy, people are gonna be attracted to that and they're gonna feel it. That's what I try to do with every team I'm on. I always try to have some banter with people, but when I'm on the field, people know that I'm serious and that I mean business. So I think one of the best things to do is Obviously have fun and smile on the pitch, but when you're on the pitch, you mean business. You're there to work, you're there to get better, you're there to help your team win games. When you're off the pitch, whether you're in the locker room, whether you're going out to dinner with teammates, whether you're you know, grabbing a drink with teammates, have fun, enjoy, crack jokes, talk about things that you have similar interests in, and just get to know the person and don't try too hard. Don't overthink it and just enjoy. And if you really, really, want to know how to get more interconnected with people this is one of the biggest books the most important books that i recommend to anyone especially all my clients how to win friends and influence people by Derek Carnegie. if you naturally don't have that inside you that you are not so good at connecting with people fortunately i've been given that gift that i'm pretty good at connecting with people i have fun i make people laugh i give them good energy i'm very interested in helping people get to the next level i just love connecting with people i'm a pretty extroverted guy with all that being said it's very very important to connect with your teammates and the way that you connect with your teammates is not overdoing it not overthinking it not trying too hard and just enjoy it going with the flow and vibing on and off the field and I promise you when you connect with your teammates in a deeper and a better way you're gonna perform much better on the pitch and the funny thing is the coach and the rest of the staff will notice that and it will actually give you more chance to play more chance to have a bigger role in the team just go connect with the guys show the coach show the team show the entire organization that you want to be here and when you do that you're going to be able to sign for the team and you're going to be able to get to next levels but anyways thank you so much for watching this video i really really appreciate you giving me your attention and you giving me your ears if you like the video please hit that like button please drop a comment in the continuous q a box let me know what other questions you would like me to answer and i will answer them in the next video make sure to hit that subscribe make sure to tell your friends your teammates and your family about my channel let's grow together stay healthy stay safe deuces